Debate is everywhere. From blue-haired streamers to 15-year-old kids, being able to wreck your opponent is seen as the key test for any internet crave dweller searching for relevance. But rarely do master debaters explain what makes them so invincible in the virtual gladiatorial ring. That's what I'm here for. Instead of using a bunch of nonsense terms to make myself sound smart, I'm going to focus on the main mistakes the amateurs make and masters avoid. Framing. If your framing doesn't fit the picture you're trying to create, winning a debate against any opponent is impossible. I'll explain why. You see, the most fundamental aspect of a debate is controlling the boundaries of the conversation. Everyone has different moral boundaries, different ideological viewpoints, and therefore, if you allow your opponent to construct an argument from their perspective, inevitably, you'll be trapped in a logical box you can't escape. A perfect example of a masterful framer is everyone's favourite ambiguous brown guy, Andrew Tate. He doesn't have the best arguments or the most logical approach, but he knows how to trap an opponent in his moral framing and to dismantle their argument from this vantage point. A brilliant example of this is the way in which he answers questions about his past misogyny and potentially illegal behavior. I'm not gonna subscribe to you, right. sit down and you have to sit down, it's not what? About that. I'm it's a about grown ass woman, I pay my own bills and you're gonna tell me what to do? That's fine, you may not realize it, but a man does a whole bunch of shit for you that you don't know. He's watching the shows you wanna watch, he's listening to you talk gossip about the girls at uh, work, he's fucking going, yeah, I like that dress, that dress. He doesn't give a fuck about any of it. He's doing it for you, See, that's but the second it's back the yeah. other way, nah. you have some fucking issue with he's autonomy. Right. He's bullshit. right, Listen, yeah, he's right, because I, women, I, women talk I, nonsense I, for a long time. I, I, you guys see him what's up? Okay, I'll explain it. Why does he seem so much more dominant than his opponents? Well, as I said, it's all about the framing. See, Tate wants to connect his comments about women to a long-standing traditional conservatism that culminated in his conversion to Islam. He has a narrative that he's trying to push, and his opponents don't. By focusing on this narrative, Rather than the conversation centering around his past comments or very untraditional and potentially illegal lifestyle, his opponents often get caught in debates around traditional values and opening doors and home invasions, shit that isn't remotely relevant. By doing this, he makes the debate not about his personal shadiness and hypocrisy, but about a civilizational conflict between the matrix and, and a traditional value system under threat by a feminist assault. If only his opponents instead emphasised that they had no problem with traditional values and what they were focused on was not his support for men providing and provisioning, but his very non-traditional pimping operation, misogynistic comments and serious allegations against, then they could easily divert his arguments back into their framing. Instead, they get caught up in frankly irrelevant debates around Bugattis and home invasions and materialism and therefore Tate has the upper hand. The only person in the internet discourse that I've seen do a brilliant job at holding strong to his own framing and not getting caught up in the tactics of his opponents on a consistent basis is Destiny. I bought my ex's Rolexes, all types of shit. Well, no, she spends maybe like 10, 20K on them after they probably spent quarter mil on her. Girls aren't stupid. They're never going to invest in a guy to that kind of money unless they're getting something way more in return. But I, think, I think for women too, you pay in time. And it's yeah. that's a big deal, right? Yeah. Like if I date a girl from like 24 to 29 for five years and it doesn't work out, I'm fine. I'm 29 years old. I'm a dude. Like I'm okay. That girl, you're throwing away her entire mm -hmm. mid to late 20s. That time investment as a woman, when you're in this world where we're talking about like high value men versus high value women, the value of a woman in that world is measured in like 20 to 30, and then she's done. So I think there is a big risk on the woman's side. We just don't see it as men because they're not like building businesses or, or paying in dollars. But like every day she spends with you is another day that she's like getting away from 24 and past like that age where I don't know if I can compete with these like young mother Impressive, right? Instead of adopting Myron's definition of a high value man and flailing about trying to contest that rich and successful men get more bussy, he dismantles this framing and constructs his own definition. Myron might say a high value man is this and that, but Destiny asked the question of whether this notion of high value is actually backed by reality. After attacking Myron's framing, what does he do? He draws on evidence and superior life experience to dismantle the fundamental premises of Myron's framing. Myron says that a high value man is a guy in his 30s who has learned from spreading that fertilizer how to find a good woman and avoid the streets. 
But Destiny points out that the data reveals a very different story. Surprisingly enough, God-fearing conservative women who believe that the power of heavens will punish adultery of the scorching fires of hell are not looking for a dude who shagged more girls than Boris has kids. But he doesn't give up there though. He dismantles Myron's very notion of success, showing that evidence indicates university education is tremendously more lucrative than the classic combo of roids and dropshipping.